Ever stumbled upon hidden treasure in the most unexpected places? Ha! <laughs> That's exactly what happened to me during a recent hunt for faulty amplifiers online. While browsing the usual marketplaces, I struck gold. A NAD C740 amplifier with speakers, all for just 50 bucks. As I dug into this audio relic, I discovered that its issues were far less severe than advertised. Not only did I breathe new life into this classic piece, but I also picked up a fascinating skill along the way, rejuvenating a vacuum fluorescent display. Welcome to Mark's High Level Tinkering. Remember, if I can do it, ah, you can do it too. So here we go. 26 years of dust. It looks like that nobody was in here before me. Well, it looks quite nice, but wait a minute. I hate this. I mean, I really hate this. Why didn't they adjust the parts according to the channels, just like left and right separated? I hate this. It's not easy to fix. I recently opened this Sony here and here you can see left and right properly separated, easy to fix, easy to measure, easy to compare. Leave a comment if you share that. I mean, I think this is just lazy engineering. Well, let's go back into our beautiful blue machine. So let's get rid of that 26 year old dust. So first things first, uh, let's check if this uh, thing gets power, if it's running. And I'll be very careful with that. So my test setup here is a little bit improvised, but on the right side you see my load, so I can switch between 4, 6 and 8 ohms. I have also a little control monitor there. In the middle I have my function generator, which I plug in right now. And then obviously from the load it goes up to the oscilloscope, where I can see the signal going out again out, the, out of the amplifier. On the ground you see my variac uh, where I can control the voltage going into the amplifier and also can control the amps going to the amplifier. So if, if the current is, is, is going up or raising very fast so I know there is a short uh, but in this case it looks good. So let's see the signal. Uh, here's the first problem. The button for the tone defeat does not look very nice. You see there is a clear problem while switching on and off. So this button needs to be fixed first. <laughs> That's an easy fix. I mean, contact spray is your best friend. I mean, it cleans it, it deoxidizes it, and that's it. Easy fix. Let's check it. Yeah, perfect. All good now.
When looking at the display, I realized that it's not evenly bright. So some of the letters are more dim than others. Um, you can see that probably also here. So the FM is clearly, and also this T2 monitor is, is much brighter than the rest. So that's 26 years of, of usage. I mean, what you can do is, I read that, the top here on the left and the right, you have, I think, the cathode. And this is basically uh, controlling all the horizontal lines you can see here. And I have seen some videos where they heat up these horizontal lines to burn away, I don't know, dust or whatever is on there. So my idea is now to put some voltage, apply some voltage on the left and the right side of this display and see whether I get these uh, lines, these horizontal lines heated up. In order not to destroy anything inside the machine, I decided to unplug the display, the whole board here. And uh, I don't want to destroy any chips or whatever. So that's why I'm taking this off. Well, on the back side, uh, I discovered these two chips probably driving the display. Um, in order not to destroy them, I decided to unsolder these two pins here from the display on the left side that I can apply the voltage without destroying these two uh, probably sensitive chips. Uh, now comes the moment of truth. So whatever direction, I don't know. So I decided to do the plus terminal to the right side, the ground on the left side. And yeah, applying slowly but surely some voltage. So I, I think eight, 8 volts is enough. I mean, it was glowing good enough for me. I don't know if you can go higher, but I didn't want to destroy anything. And yes, repeat that procedure three times. What I did, roughly 10 to 20 seconds. And yeah, let's see the result.
Ooh, what a difference. Very nice. Look at that. Remember when the FM was much, much, much brighter than the rest? And now it's, it's, it's really even. I like it very much. I'm very happy. So now I fixed one switch and the display, but honestly, <laughs> I haven't checked uh, if it's really working. So uh, let's try to get some music out of that machine. <laughs> Wonderful, lovely. So let's put this thing together again. Look at that beauty. I mean, it looks like, I mean, you would, you couldn't tell that this is 26 year old, this machine. It really looks again, like fresh from the factory. I like it very much and it works. It works very well. What I discovered here are some heat marks and I wonder where they're coming from. So, Actually, there's these uh, power resistors here. These three are obviously heating up. And then down here is the voltage regulator. Also, this one gets very hot. And uh, yeah, left some marks on the cover. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope uh, you learned something and remember, if I can do it, <laughs> you can do it too. By the way, um, what's coming up next is I bought this very, very nice vintage power supply, obviously faulty. And in my next video, I try to fix that. So stay tuned. You know the drill, right? And hit the notification bell, then you get notified and find out what's that rattling sound in here. <laughs> See you!